This video will show you how to configure ClearSCADA to communicate with a device using DMP3 to retrieve timestamp data. To start, ensure that you have ClearSCADA database running, Vuex open, and you are logged into the system with administrator rights. Communicating with a DMP3 device requires a number of objects to be created in the database. We will begin by creating a group to hold the various objects. Right-click on the database, create new, and select group. Rename the group to DNP3 Tutorial. The first object to create is a DNP3 direct channel. The channel object relates to the communication method, serial or IP, that ClearSCADA will use to communicate with the device. Right click on the DNP3 Tutorial Create New, DMP3, and select Direct Channel. Rename it to Channel. Double click on the channel to open the Properties form, or you can right click on the channel and select Edit Properties. Under the Channel tab, check the In Service box to make the channel active. Go to the Connection tab and change the connection type to Network and the TCP IP type to UDP. You may need to change this part of the configuration depending on the setup of your DMP3 device. To allow your DMP3 device to send unsolicited message or report by exception, we can enable the listen port and set it to 20,000. This is the port that the remote device will send its messages to the host. Lastly, on the Scan Parameters tab, set the line speed to 10,240,000 from the dropdown. ClearSCADA uses this information when calculating response timeouts for communications. Save the channel configuration by clicking on the ClearSCADA icon in the upper left corner and selecting Save or simply click on the Save icon on the toolbar. Close the Properties form. The next object we need to create is called an Outstation Set. This defines a group of devices or outstations as they are called in ClearSCADA. Right-click on the DMP3 tutorial group. Create new. DMP3. And select direct outstation set. Rename it to set. Open the Properties form by double-clicking Set. Starting with the Outstation tab, put the set in service. Next, we will tie the object to the channel we created. The easiest way to do that is to click the Browse button to the right of the channel field. Expand the DMP Tutorial group, click on Channel, and click OK. Next, click on the DMP3 tab and set the local address to 100. This is the DMP3 master address that is used on the network by ClearSCADA to communicate to the remote devices. Save the form and close it. Finally, to establish communication to the device, we need to create an outstation object. Right-click on the DMP3 tutorial group Create New, DMP3, Generic, and select Direct Outstation. Rename it to Outstation. Open the Properties form and start with the Outstation tab. Put the outstation in service. 
This will allow clear SCADA to start communicating with the device. Tie the outstation to the outstation set by browsing to the set we defined earlier. Next, go to the DMP3 tab. Even though DMP3 protocol has various configurable settings available, we will only work with a few basic ones. In most cases, the default values will work just fine. Further detailed information may be found in the online help for each field by pressing F1 or by reading the tooltips provided for each field as you hover over that field. Set the address field to 197. This is the DMP3 address of the remote device. Set the integrity polling interval to 5 seconds. You can do this by either entering 5S or using the Browse button to configure the time. This asks ClearSCADA to interrogate the device for both timestamped event and current or static data every five seconds. Finally, go to the Network tab. Select Single Network from the Network dropdown. Enter the IP address of the device. In this case, 192.168.1.197. The port field here is the port on which the RTU is listening for inbound communications. In our setup, it is 20,000 for UDP communication. Save the form and close it. Now that the configuration is complete, we can test to see if we are successfully talking with the device. In the database navigator, right click on the outstation object and select View Status. Scroll down and note whether the state field says Healthy Multi-Drop. If it does, then you are communicating to the device. If it does not, then check the settings for the device and confirm that they have been entered correctly in ClearSCADA. The final step is to add some points to retrieve data from the device. We will retrieve an analog and a digital point from our device. Let's start with the configuration of the digital point first. Right click on the DMP3 tutorial group, create new, DMP3, generic, and select binary input point. Rename it to DI1. Double-click DI1 to open the Properties form. Under the Binary Point tab, check the In Service button. Tie the point to the outstation by browsing to the outstation we defined earlier. Set the point number to 1, which is the first digital point in our device. Next, scroll down further to Log Data section and under the Historic Data Filter, select Static and Event Data from the drop-down list. This will allow all informational data to be stored in ClearSCADA as history. Click on the Historic tab and check the Enabled box. Under the Trend List section below, set the offset to H-1H and the interval to 2H. This will default the trend time span to start from the beginning of the last hour with a span of two hours. Finally, check the Use Raw Data box at the bottom. This tells ClearSCADA to display trends using the raw samples rather than processing the data prior to sending it to the client. Save and close the form. Next, we will set up an analog point. Right click on the DMP3 tutorial group, create new, DMP3, generic, and select analog input point. Rename it to AI1. Double-click AI1 to open the Properties form. 
Under the Analog Point tab, check the In Service button. Tie the point to the outstation by browsing to the outstation we defined earlier. Set the point number to 1, which is the first analog point in our device. Scroll down the configuration page to scaling and set the raw full scale to 16,385. This is the max value provided by the sensor attached to the analog input of the device which is translated to a max value of 100. Your device value may not need to be scaled and as such you can uncheck the enabled box. Next, scroll down further to the log data section and under the historic data filter, select static and event data from the drop down list. This will allow all informational data to be stored in ClearSCADA as history. Lastly, click on the historic tab and check the enabled box. Under the trend list section below, Set the offset to H minus 1H and the interval to 2H. This will default the trend time span to start from the beginning of the last hour with a span of two hours. Finally, check the use raw data box at the bottom. This tells ClearSCADA to display trends using the raw samples rather than processing the data prior to sending it to the client. Save and close the form. Next, we will display the values on a mimic screen and then in a trend. Double click the default mimic. Click and drag the AI one point onto the open area of the mimic and release the mouse button. Select the name from the menu. Repeat the process again for AI one and select value and then formatted value from the menu. Do the process once more and select Last Updated. Organize the data to suit your liking. Now repeat the steps with DI1 point. Right click and drag the DI1 point onto the open area of the mimic and release the mouse button. Select the name from the menu. Repeat the process again for DI1 and select state from the menu. Do the process once more and select last updated. Organize the data to suit your liking. Change the values for the analog and digital on your device and see the values change on the Mimic. Save and close the Mimic. We will now display the values on a trend. Right click on the DNP3 tutorial group Create New, Trend. Rename it to Trend. Double click Trend to open it in design mode. Right click anywhere on the X time axis and select Edit from the menu. In the Edit X axis screen, under Mode, change the current hour to Other. For the offset, click on the Browse option. Click on the hours checkbox, select subtract from the drop down and enter a 1. Click OK. You should have hour minus 1 hour in the offset entry. For interval, change the 1 to 2. Now click and drag AI1 over the open space in the trend screen. Release the mouse button and select raw historic trace. The AI1 has been added to the trend. Do the same with DI1. From the historic trends of each point, 
you can see that the points are updating. With the cursor on the x-axis, you may use the built-in feature of ClearSCADA to zoom in or out with the mouse scroll wheel. Once done, save the trend configuration page. And before we finish, let's have a look at what happens when communications is lost to the device. Unplug the communication cable from the device. After some time, ClearSCADA will raise a communications failed alarm. The time to raise this alarm depends how frequently you pull the device, the communication retries configured, the number of transaction attempts, and the way that the failure occurs. All these settings are configurable to provide flexibility in the way that communication problems are reported to users. Notice the communication failure alarm in the alarm banner. Go ahead and change the values a few times. After a short period, plug the communications cable back in. As you can see, the data has now appeared on the trend because it was being stored in the DMP device. Everything that occurred during the communication loss period is transferred to ClearSCADA when the communications was reestablished. The history is maintained by default, and the user now also has a record of the communications failure in the event journal for future analysis. This is one of the key benefits of DMP3 in that a communications failure does not mean a loss of critical process data, billing information, or data mandated for regulatory compliance. The DMP device keeps a record of the changes happening. This brings us to the end of our DMP3 tutorial. While DMP3 provides significant flexibility, it is possible to configure and deploy simple systems quickly and easily. ClearSCADA provides a number of tools to simplify the configuration, deployment, and management of DMP3 networks, and you can find information on these tools in the ClearSCADA online help.